my name is Spot. I'll be your pilot today. Ah, I'm Black Lightning. Where are we going? Not sure yet, but the possibilities are endless. Hey everyone. Earth, as far as we know, is the only planet with life on it. At least complex life. It's in the habitable zone which gave us the optimal conditions for liquid water to exist on the surface. You can't be too close to the sun or else you'll become Venus, and if you're too far away, your planet will be cold. I can't say you'll become a Mars because a reason proposed for its demise was more than it just being farther away. Mars is a smaller planet than Earth, and that caused the planet's core to cool down faster than the Earth's. Another reason offered was that it was hit by large asteroids, and that shut down its magnetic field. We don't know why exactly it happened, so more research is needed. However, we do know it lost its magnetic field, which is a planet's protection against solar winds and radiation if you want life to exist on a planet's surface. The reason why I said it cooled faster than the Earth is because the Earth's core is also cooling down. Eventually, Earth's core will cool down as well, but that will happen far into the future. We've been hearing about climate change for a long time now, whether you agree or disagree with it. This video is about the worst case scenario. The scenario in which people, for the most part, are not going to care about climate change or do something about it until it hits closer to home. That day when climate change becomes an inconvenience is the day we do something about it, but by then it's already too late. That's very possible. Also, this next segment in the video isn't about guilt tripping people. There are people who want to help out but are not able to, or they need access to vehicles to get to work. I understand, and many people's contribution to the problem is due to circumstance. If eco-friendly vehicles and technology were available now and were affordable, many of us would switch to them in a heartbeat. I found a planet! Hold on! Beautiful, but that planet doesn't look friendly. I must have gotten a false read. I'll keep looking. Give me a second. So, climate change would have happened without our influence, but our influence is speeding up the process. We are consuming more natural resources than the Earth can supply due to there being an increasing demand for these resources. The point I'm trying to make is that livable conditions for us on the Earth will not last forever, and it will not be able to sustain human life sometime in the future if we continue living the way we are now. I can imagine a century from now we'd be living in space stations near the Earth, or at least made an attempt to colonize another planet or a moon. Right now, many people's interest is Mars. It's a very interesting planet. We know it once had water on the surface, so could there have been life on Mars? At least microorganisms. It's possible. Mars is the most Earth-like planet in our solar system, and I know that's not saying much considering our other options, but it's ideal for terraforming. There are challenges we have to face in order to do so, such as low gravity and pressure, and a lack of a magnetic field which leaves us open for dangerous space weather. Once we overcome them, we have ourselves another planet. The next place to visit would be the moons in our solar system. I believe colonizing the moon, or Luna, would benefit us. I don't think it will be a place to live on, but definitely a place to build a space station on to aid in space missions. Perhaps a pit stop for fuel or repairs. We have some very fascinating moons in our solar system. Europa from Jupiter is made up of silicate rock and has a water ice crust. Due to tidal forces from Jupiter, geologic activities, and irradiation, it might have a subsurface ocean. It's similar to another moon of Jupiter, Io. It has a lot of volcanic activity due to tidal heating from Jupiter. Enceladus is a moon from Saturn and it's also covered in ice, but it also might have a subsurface ocean due to geothermal activity. If life is discovered in these oceans, then it will change what we think where in a solar system can life possibly form. These moons are outside of our Goldilocks zone, so if we find a life, that means that life can form on a moon of a gas giant. I don't think these moons are candidates for a long-term stay, but like our moon, they can offer pit stops between travel. Titan is a moon of Saturn and it has a thick atmosphere. It's described as being similar to an early Earth and it's the only moon in our solar system that I know of that's planets-like. Life could exist in the lakes of liquid methane on Titan. If this is the case, Titan could be on its way to becoming habitable to complex life billions of years from now. Of course, we'd need another host planet or moon by then. Even though Titan is a moon, it has a thick atmosphere. Imagining a moon that's habitable to us with a great view of a host planet in the sky would be a sight to behold. I talked about the problems we have to overcome in regards to terraforming, but what about these psychological problems? Let's just sink in. You're heading out on a long trip away from Earth, your home planet. This is unlike anything most people have ever faced. 
Right now on space shuttles, the light and dark cycles are much faster than on Earth, and that can result in unstable sleep patterns, which will throw your circadian rhythm off balance and cause neural behavior problems. Imagine space travel without a star to provide a light and dark cycle. It's going to take a lot of adjusting to get used to that. You will be in a completely alien environment. While you're in a spaceship during travel, you're in a cramped space with people you may not get along with and you could develop a stressful feeling of isolation. It takes about 5 to 10 months to travel to Mars with current technology and much longer if you're going farther away. And I'm sure time would feel as if it's moving much slower because of this novel experience. These are extreme environments that you have to get used to if you ever want to travel to another planet or a moon. But research is being done to find ways to counter these effects and effectively prepare astronauts for a space exploration. If we ever get to the point where we can travel to other star systems with ease, the possibilities are endless. We could possibly find a planet with conditions similar to the current day Earth, but if we did, that would mean we wouldn't be alone on that planet. Where there is oxygen, there is life as we know it on such a planet. The question would be, how far along are the natives are on this planet? And depending on their overall sophistication, is it okay to colonize it? Or does that not matter? Found another planet! Whoa! Spot, this one is barren. This seems pointless. Was a planet like Earth really that rare? Welcoming planets should be plentiful in this galaxy. What gives? You've only seen less than 1% of the galaxy and you're already giving up? Have some patience. To think we're just space dust from an exploding star is... Incredible, huh? Yeah. Let's talk about the ethics of colonizing a planet with life on it. Let's say we find out that microbial life exists on Mars or on one of the moons in our solar system one day. Would it be ethical to displace or perhaps kill them during the terraforming process? People against it might say, doing so is like saying bacteria can't have the right to exist because they are simpler organisms than us. We shouldn't devalue their lives because we're more complex than them, and we should preserve all forms of life in our solar system because the organisms could be unique to Mars. Destroying them could be a loss we'd never get back. People forward to might say, Earth will become hostile to us in the future so humanity has to find another home planet before then. If microbial life on Mars exists, it might be related to the ones on Earth. Microbial life from Mars could have landed on Earth or vice versa, which is called panspermia. This could mean microbial life on Mars isn't unique from Earth, so terraforming Mars wouldn't be a problem. My answer is, while I see the appeal to both sides, I don't see much of a reason to stay away from dead planets with extremophiles living on them. If we can terraform dead planets and make them habitable to complex life, then why squander that potential? If the planet has the potential to eventually develop complex life from these microorganisms, then I say stay away from them. But if the planet is dead, let's bring it to life. What if we find a habitable planet with complex life on it, but they were about as complex as the species on Earth millions of years ago? Our technology is vastly superior than theirs because they've yet to make it that far. Would it be okay to make this planet our new home? Of course we wouldn't intentionally kill them, but we assert our existence on this planet among them. Is that okay? If you answered no, congrats, you understand just how terrible this could be. <laughs> We could introduce microorganisms and or diseases which could wipe out the species on that planet or the opposite could happen and we're the ones who can't handle the life on that planet. Humans have a bad history of colonizing land from the native populations and asserting our will onto them, but let's hope we've learned from our collective dark history. All of this poses two questions. Will colonizing another planet or a moon once Earth is no longer suitable for life be a new beginning for us? Or will we be bringing our problems with us? In my opinion, it's hard to tell. Humans are naive as we are brilliant, imperfect yet perfect. This holds potential for great good and great evil, but I don't think we'd ever fully realize either one. Whatever the future of our species bring, I hope it's mostly good. Despite what some people may have you believe, we humans are greater than the sum of our parts. Anyways, thanks for watching and take care. I have a good feeling about this one. Are you sure? Yep, sit back.
If you liked this video and want to support me further than liking and or watching my videos, please consider becoming a patron of mine. The link is in the description box. This will help me release higher quality videos at a reasonable rate. All of my patrons get a spot in the credits along with exclusive preview of future content, and any amount is greatly appreciated. Thank you.